okay now the next step is to see whether the slab uh, or the footing is safe in two ratio it is given in is code clause number 34.2.4 you can read that clause and um, please watch the previous video which i have uploaded and i'll give a link in the description to that you can see what is two way shear and one way shear i have clearly explained in that video so in case of two way shear our footing will look like this so in this diagram you can see this is the width of the footing and this is the length of the footing and in case of two way shear the critical plane occurs at a distance of d by 2 from the face of the column this is the column and this is the column face and this is the critical plane okay so this is the width of the column that is 275 mm this is the length of the column which is 450 mm and uh, the depth d is uh, 532 mm always take the smaller depth do not take the value of dx which was greater than 532 mm always take the smaller one so dy is 532 mm which is d so what we have to do is we can we have to calculate the shear resisted by concrete and to calculate the shear force that is causing the two-way failure and for that we need the area of the shaded portion and the area of the critical plane okay so first we uh, for calculating the area of shaded portion as well as the critical plane we need the perimeter of the critical plane which is this part okay so get the perimeter of the critical section we need this length this length this length and this length that will be 275 plus 532 divided by 2 plus 532 divided by 2 which is this length that is 275 which is the length of the column and d by 2 from this side and d by 2 from this side so that's this and this length will be 450 plus d by 2 from this side and d by 2 from this side so I'll write 450 plus 532 divided by 2 plus 532 divided by 2 and I'll multiply this by 2 to get the summation of all these lengths so that will be 3,578 3, mm so once you get the perimeter of critical plane you can calculate area of shaded portion Now to get the area of shaded portion which I have sketched out in red um, I can calculate the area of this entire footing and deduct the area which is not hatched so that will be 1910 into 1380 minus this length is uh, 275 plus 532 multiplied by this length is 450 plus 532 that is 1840 mm square or 1.84 meter square okay so after getting area of shaded portion you have to calculate values of ks and tau c the value uh, how to calculate for this you have to refer clause number 31.6.3.1 it's on page number 58 of the is code and it says that the ks value should be 0 0.5 plus beta where beta is the short side of the column divided by the long side and it should be less than 1 so if in our case it will be 0 0.5 plus 275 is the short side and long side is 450 and which is 1.11 so as it is greater than 1 I'll take it as 1 and tau c is 0 0.25 under root of fck which is 1.25 newton per mm square so once you get ks and tau c you can calculate shear force or say shear resisted by concrete which will be the permissible stress that is ks multiplied by tau c multiplied by the area of critical plane the area which is subjected to the shear stress so 
this is 1.25 multiplied by area of critical plane you can calculate area of critical plane by multiplying the perimeter of the critical plane by the effective depth of the footing so perimeter was 3578 multiplied by 532 is the effective depth which will be 2379 triple zero newton and that is 2379 kilo newton let's assume this is voc now next step is to calculate the shear force that is causing the two-way shear failure now this force can be calculated by cal uh, from the uplift force that is lifting this shaded portion upwards so for that we need value of w multiplied by area of shaded portion which will be 341.45 as calculated earlier and the area of shaded portion was 1.84 meter square if you multiply these two these two values you can get 628 kilo newton let's say this is VUD so if you compare these two uh, values that is the shear force resisted by concrete and the shear force causing to be a shear failure you can see that the shear force that can be resisted by concrete is far greater than the shear force that is causing to be a shear failure as the shear force that can be resisted by concrete is greater than the shear force that is causing to be a shear failure the footing is safe in two way shear now the next step is check for one way shear so your diagram would look like this in one way shear so this is the width and this is the length this is the column 275 is the width of the column 450 mm is the length of the column and the two in one way shear the critical plane is at a distance of d from the face of the column okay now we have to calculate the uh, perimeter of the critical plane and the area of shaded portion in this case also so the perimeter of critical plane will be In x direction it will be for shorter direction it will be 1380 mm and for longer direction it will be 1910 mm so first I'll start solving for y direction because um, the lens in both the direction is different we have to check for both the directions if uh, we are designing for square footing we have we only do it once so the perimeter of critical plane in y direction is 1910 mm okay and the area of shaded portion is this part so for that we have to calculate this length and then multiply it by 1910 so that value of x will be 1380 this minus 275 which is the width of the column divide by 2 once you do this you get this width from here up to here now you have to deduct this part which is D minus 532 so you will get excess 20.5 mm okay so area of shaded portion will be 1910 multiplied by 20.5 now tau c was 0 0.25 newton per mm square shear resisted by concrete will be tau c multiplied by area of critical plane tau c is 0 0.25 multiplied by area of critical plane will be 1910 which is the perimeter multiplied by the depth of the footing 532 mm 
so that is 294.64 kN say it is VUC now shear force causing one way shear will be W which is the uplift force of the soil multiplied by area of shaded portion okay so 341.5 which was the value of W which is the uplift force of the soil multiplied by area of shaded portion was 1.91 multiplied by 20.5 mm so that is 0 0.0205 mm in, in meters so which is 13.37 kilonewton I'll say that is VUD so again in this case the shear resisted by concrete is 294 and the shear force causing one way shear is only 13 kilonewton meter kilonewton so that is VUC is greater than VUD hence it is safe so the same step we have to perform for x direction also so for x direction the shear resisted by concrete is tau c multiplied by the area of the critical plane tau c is 0 0.25 multiplied by the area of the critical plane so the perimeter in that case was 1380 multiplied by the depth of the footing was 532 mm which is 183.54 kN I'll say this is VU C now again shear resisted by sorry shear force causing the one way shear will be uh, the uplift force W multiplied by the area of shaded portion in X direction which is this part this is the shaded portion so we need the value of Y here so let's say uh, Y is 1910 this length minus 450 mm which is this divided by 2 so we will get this part now deduct the value of D from here so that is 198 mm which is 0 0.198 meters so I will plug in all the values 341.5 multiplied by 1.38 multiplied by 0 0.198 which is 93.31 kN again the shear resisted by concrete is 183 and the force that is causing the one way shear is only 93 so VUC is greater than VUD hence it is safe so we performed the two way shear check and one way shear check and in both the cases the footing was safe and um, that's all with the main uh, checks and the next check is the check for development length and the check for load transfer so the check for development length is easy you just have to put the value of um, sorry the formula for the development length ld which is 0 0.87 fy into phi upon 4 into tau bd so the value of tau bd is given in um, the IS code in clause number 26.2.1.1 so for M25 grade of concrete it is 1.4 and just below the table it is said that for deformed bars conforming to IS 1786 it has to be increased by 60% so 1.4 multiplied by 1.6 is 1.92 so the tau BD value here is 1.92 Newton per mm square. This is given on page number 43. So plug in all the values 0 0.87 into 415 into 12 upon 4 into 1.92. That is 564 mm. So in our case 
for the longer side the length available from the face of the column was 732 732 or something like that and the development length is 564 mm which we have to provide from the face of the column which is clearly less than the uh, length available so the check for development length is safe